audience, we can get started. So um, thank you guys for coming uh, to yet another space. This is the Jasmine birthday space. I don't think there's anything special about that um, in terms of what we have prepared for you, but it is a big deal. I mean, the company is eight years old. And, um, you know, I think a lot of people at this point have been here for about two and a half years, right? I think most of the people who listen to our spaces are from like uh, the United States and the Western world. And uh, I think that was around, the, I mean, maybe around the time two and a half years ago where Coinbase listed Jasmine. And I think that's where a lot of people kind of joined the community and kind of got stuck in a way because the price did go up. We got diluted into oblivion. Um, but hopefully you guys had the funds to, uh, to buy on the way down. But anyway, um, it does look like finally uh, the company is heading in the right direction. It's also very good, probably not coincidental timing um, that, uh, you know, the bull market is coming and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's been good, but, um, you know, I, I think 2025 will be a very, very good year for Jasmine, and then that leaves, you know, with the KPI goals that they had in mind um, that... Um, it would take, sorry, yeah, so then it would just take another year after that. So, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's been good. Uh, hey, Maximus, uh, do you want to do you wanna speak? Oh, let's see, I'll, I'll invite him to speak. If he says yes, then we'll see. And um, let's see. Oh, yeah, and then there was the big Panasonic partnership, so... Um, that's been very exciting. It's a lot of it's a lot of ground to cover in terms of research because, like, you know how if you, if you've been here long enough, you know how it was with Sony, where like, you know, we would kind of think a lot of things would have to do with Jasmine, but they don't necessarily. Um, even uh, I think yesterday night there was some news announced that Sony um, would be releasing a uh, stablecoin, and it's going to be on the Polygon network. Um, that's what I was seeing on headlines, but I don't know if that's necessarily on the Polygon network, but it does kind of make sense with what um, Astar in Japan is doing. So, um, hey, Maximus. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, so Maximus, can you hear me? I cannot hear you. Um, and then I heard that. Um, okay. Anyway, uh, Brian, do you have anything uh, you wanted to add? Sorry, I'm trying to also work at the same time. So no, you're kidding. Sorry if I feel um, a little spaced out, but yeah. So uh, just in terms of like um, where we're currently at uh, from our perspective, because you know we we don't get all the details. Um, but 2024. Um, I know when you met with Hara back in November, when you went to their office in Tokyo, uh, he told you, you know, 24 is going to be a year of um, uh, building and, and more so, you know, I know a lot of people are being like, <laughs> they've been building for eight years, uh, but um, you have to keep in mind the uh, what they're actually building and uh, how new this technology is. I mean, a AAA game is, takes five to six years to make, um, and that's just a, a video game. And when you're talking about uh, completely new technology that requires new infrastructure regulations, laws, uh, tax reforms, et cetera, it's a much bigger um, encompassing type of project. But uh, 2024, when he's talking about building, he's more so referring to them actually starting to roll out their product, which we're seeing with Panasonic. And um, that's laid out across the roadmap that we'll touch on. But 2024 in itself, um, you know, I, some of the big things uh, just that I'm hoping to see is that, you know, this Panasonic partnership, um, in my eyes, and uh, anyone can tell me if they think differently, because um, it's just my opinion, is, is more so a um, market trial with this company. And, you know, he stated that uh, he's looking to have 100,000 um, PDLs in the 2024 fiscal year uh, in Japan uh, with Panasonic. So, you know, we start seeing uh, them rolling out uh, 
um, the data valorization, connecting to the wallet, um, uh, IoT. Uh, Brian, I think I, I think you cut out. Is that right? Did I? Yeah. Did I cut off there? Yeah. Am I back? Data okay. valorization. Yeah. Sorry, um, I had an incoming call. I need to turn off, turn that off. But um, anyway, uh, when we see all of those things um, start actually being utilized by a uh, world-renowned company, you know, Panasonic is a big name brand. It's not a um, it's not uh, at the market cap of some of the other Japanese ones like Toyota, Sony, um, go down the list. But it's uh, it's been around for a very long time. Almost everyone has heard of Panasonic or has used some of their products. So when you see this roll out through them and you uh, get some good feedback, then hopefully that's when we're going to start seeing in 2025 this roll out to a lot of the other names. And I'm sure that we'll get other um, – well, I'm hoping – uh, based on some of the information that's been released, that it's insinuated we'll get other uh, major partnership um, announcements this year, especially through Junction, their layer two Jasmine chain uh, solution. Yeah, I do feel like they'll make they'll get a lot of at least crypto partners in the Junction um, with with Junction because I mean Hara Hara knows that it's time, and we put him through. We put them through a lot of abuse, man. Like even even myself included. Like there have been times where, where I was like pretty pissed off at him. And like even when I was in Japan, when I was asking him questions for like two hours, <laughs> there were some questions that he was just sidestepping or like he just wasn't giving me a good answer. Um, and I'm like, man, what are you doing? And I'm I know like his English is good enough to where I'm just like, oh my god, this guy is just like he's just messing with me. I mean, he should just throw me out of his office right now and save us both the the headache. But um, yeah, it's, I mean, Panasonic is good enough. Like I, I, I know a lot of us thought it would be like a Sony thing. Um, some people were saying Intel or Intel Japan, which I, you know, that was definitely believable. I thought it was going to be Qualcomm. Uh, but I think generally speaking, we were on the right track in terms of like it being a company that Jasmine already had a lot of connections to. Uh, most of the uh, suggested companies or predicted companies that people um, were calling out were BJIT clients. So, like, it's good. Some people are reading. Some people are doing research. That's you know, that's always nice. Um, but I do think, yeah, this is this is good enough for for first go, and it's only you know, it's only three to six months. They did say they had been working together since February, which I. I don't believe, I mean, I think it runs much deeper than that, but I do still think like the three to six month thing that Hara was saying, don't think of it from February, don't think of it from earlier than that. Think of it from the day he sent out the the tweet. Because um, a lot of times, like whenever companies roll out projects, it doesn't always happen on time. Like, um, I'm being honest, it's not like... It doesn't mean that the workers are or the team is not working properly on either Panasonic side or Jasmine side, but there's always stuff. Once you start working, there's always stuff that you never think of that you're like, oh crap, we have to do this, or you know what, we can actually make something better. So we, you know, you take time to build that quality, and that's that's part of the thing, right? Like we're a lot of us are here. We've cited like Japanese quality a thousand times. Um, some people cite the samurai stuff, which I think you know is a little. Uh, is a little outdated, but, um, you know, like they are focused on building something right. And the way they probably see it is, look, it's, this thing is eight years old. Another year, if they had to, is not a problem. I'm not saying they're going to be late like that, but like, you know, some of these things do take time. Good things take time, um, especially with how big this is going to be. Now that we have a legitimate partnership in Panasonic, you can kind of see how, like, what the true potential actually is. Now it's not just talk through speculation and, and like, somewhat good and good research. It's like, wow, these things can actually happen. Because you also got to remember, like, if you think about Japan's focus on digital assets and how it's a component of their national strategy, there's really only a handful of options they have, right? One of them being... You, you have in-house companies, right? Japanese companies. But I want to talk about another one first. 
So you use other crypto projects. But if you do that, yeah, from a from an individual perspective, the citizens might be better off using other cryptos. But in terms of business and like GDP growth and all that, I'm not saying crypto is going to be a massive contributor right now. But in the future, um, you know, you're you would be missing out on that opportunity. But now I want to talk about the other side of it, where you think about the companies that are in Japan, the blockchain companies that are in Japan. There's really three that I can think of that are quote unquote major players. One of them is Soracoin or Soramitsu, which um, that is a, I don't care what anybody says, I own Soramitsu. It is a massive shit coin. Um, I, yeah, maybe they'll get things right in the future, but it sucks. Um, sorry for, you know, this is, this is the birthday space. I can cry if I want to, but um, then there's Acer, which is doing a good job, right? They've they've landed pretty good partnerships. Soto Watanabe is a good showman. He's a good promoter. Um, he's also probably smart as heck. Um, it helps when you're you're the developer and you're able to communicate well, and you know English, and you know you're young. Like tech is a young person's industry. Where like, you know, Hara, I think is. And I might get killed for saying this. I think Hara is like 38 or 39, um, yeah, which for right. tech is, te for tech, that's old. <laughs> and like, you know, it's, and, and he also doesn't have that background. But he somehow, and this is something we do have to ask him, he's somehow incredibly knowledgeable on all of this stuff. Um, it's not to say that he can go build it himself, but like at least he can, he can lay out a strategic framework enough to where he can drive and control the whole thing and like his background is you know it's an accounting background but oh yeah so also going back to what i was saying you know there's really only three options in japan so it's like who do you who do you like best is what it comes down to and you if you can't decide then you know you can also you can also diversify if you believe in the japanese crypto play right like that's that's another good option that's not a bad option like look if, if you have a strategic or a smart idea for making or like a rational idea for taking a certain investment action, like it's always good. Like you don't have to ape into Jasmine. Like I'll admit, I've I've invested a lot into Jasmine, um, but I've also realized, you know what? It's not at under a penny anymore. It's uh, for my liking, and for what I was used to, it is expensive for me. Um, where like I might buy maybe like one more DCA paychecks worth. And that's it. And then I'm ready to go. But I'm also like, well, you know, there's there's other opportunities in the market. You should also diversify. Of course, I would love to, for you to buy as much jasmine as possible. It's better for me. Um, but, you know, uh, diversification never hurt anybody. But um, do you guys have anything you want to say? I just, I talked a lot. So. Can you guys hear me okay now? Yes. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm so sorry about that. I was using my studio mic and anyway. Um, I didn't want to come in here and talk you guys' ears off because if anything, I do that on a daily on a show. But, you know, um, I saw this Jasmine 8th year anniversary special. It's, it's always great to see people of our community come together, share their own insights and so on. Obviously, Dip, you know, kind of just caught the, the end of that and so on. And, um, you know, I just want to let you guys know you're more than appreciated in this community. I mean, a lot of you guys have been around covering Jasmine at least um, – my God, like a year before me, at least. Right. And so the way I look at it is, you know, I mentioned this on a live show, like the beautiful thing about Jasmine is also the community. And, um, you know, a lot of people in mean coins, for instance, you know, get rally behind some of the community leaders with those mean coins. And I always tell people when it comes to Jasmine, you kind of have that mean coin community, if you will, but instead of having no utility, like, my God, look where we're taking this whole thing. So I'm just kind of more or less just stopping in for a second just to um, show my appreciation and, um, you know, basically be a listener like like most of us here. I mean, I see that, uh, you know, obviously Rob is also here, Crypto Future and so on, a lot of familiar faces, local guy, 270, uh, 279. Jasmine AI, a lot of you guys, right? Uh, Houston, great researcher. Forza, thanks for being here. But um, a lot of you guys, you know, in this community, there's probably a lot of people I, you know, didn't give a shout out. But um, 
you know, I just want to say you guys are really more than appreciated. And uh, there's so many people that have come into this space trying to learn more um, about our beloved Jasmine and so on. Dip, I think it's hilarious some of the things you just mentioned about Hara, but uh, it, it's, it's good intel uh, nonetheless. I'm going to kick it back to you guys. I'm going to mute myself. Yeah, thank you for the kind words, by the way. I also am a big fan of uh, your show as well. Um, I always listen to it when I'm at the gym, and some of the jokes are pretty funny. Um, I, I'm not going to lie. So, yeah, keep up the keep up the good work, and thank you for, like, always giving credit where credit is due. I mean, you know, it's, it's refreshing to see research that's not mine or not Brian's. Um, but it's also, you know, it's also good to see other community members perspectives and you're a good aggregator of, um, of all of that. And yeah. Um, and I know the NBA playoffs are coming up soon and you'll be rooting for the Suns, but I'll be rooting for, uh, LeBron James and the Lakers. So, um, you know, we might be, uh, frenemies for, for just a small, small period. So, um, but yeah, it's interesting, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, you also don't have to leave. You, I mean, I invited you to speak so that, like, if, if there's a certain topic that you wanted to touch on or if we got um, – we're covering a specific thing, like if you had other um, commentary, you know, you can always feel free. But um, somebody thumbs down me. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, hey, Dip. Yes. Um, let me uh, – if you don't mind, I want to – I know there's um, certain topics that um, uh, have been answered, but I uh, always get asked if – I can run through those real quick. Okay. Um, do you want to? Uh, do you have like a specific thing in mind, or do you want to? Yeah, they're the, on the outline. We're roadmap. Both looking at. Do you want to go um, to the roadmap? Roadmap, but more specifically, uh, uh, it's really just going to be stating uh, facts real quick, just to get yeah. those out of the way. So people who are only here to hear that, or only want to hear uh, uh, certain things, um, get out of the way, so we can uh, dive into more of the roadmap in Panasonic and Junction, et cetera. Um, but, uh, one with the, uh, lockups, um, that's on the roadmap, uh, for, um, this month, Hara does have a couple big events, uh, several big events, um, that he's going to be attending this month. One is Hong Kong this upcoming week. Then he has team Z event, uh, the weekend, uh, next weekend. And then, um, he has, uh, the, uh, token 2049 event the week after that. So he's going to be very busy. And usually this is a time where he actually makes announcements um, and you actually start uh, seeing uh, things like that. But the initial lockup was scheduled to be just 100 million coins as a test. Um, there is no plans for a burn mechanism. They will probably not do a burn mechanism. It's just why not have one written into the um, code for the actual token as a just in case, but it's in their white paper that they do not play it on using a burn mechanism for Jasmine coin itself. Um, there was some people posting that uh, 1 billion coins had been locked up because there was a discrepancy between coin gecko and coin um, market cap. However, coin gecko, um, one thing you can do is you can always just go onto the Wayback Machine, post a URL in there, and then just look back in time for when that website's been um, uh, captured previously. And you can see that uh, that actual circulating supply that's listed on CoinGecko has been the same for quite some time. In fact, I typed in the circulating supply and searched it on Twitter under Dip's name because he's always reported any changes from the deployer wallets, and it came up that uh, it was, I think, um, at the end of June or July, somewhere in that period, I think June, that they stopped updating the circulating supply on CoinGecko. So it just hasn't updated since June. Um, so there's not a billion coins that have been pulled out of circulation. It's just not updated. Um, so yeah, we're waiting on that 100 million um, as a test at first. Now they said they're gonna be doing it with an exchange, which would be interesting. So I'd assume that we would actually hear about that. It wouldn't just be, um, a test they're doing in private, uh, but just letting us know that they're doing it. Uh, I presume that it would uh, coincide with uh, some sort of announcement that uh, they've done it with a Japanese exchange, whether that's uh, Bitcoin or Binance Japan or BitGet, um, which is uh, uh, Huobi Japan. Um, so I'd, I'd presume once again, that it's gonna be one of those three, but um, I'm leaning maybe more towards Binance Japan, but who knows, we'll see. Um, Bitpoint was obviously the first one to list them, and he has really close ties with Genki Yoda. 
uh, who founded um, Bitpoint. Uh, then there was the, um, uh, what was the other one that everyone kept asking about? Oh, and one thing about the 100 million, he yeah. said 100 million a month, I think. I think he did say that in the yeah. uh, um, Telegram AMA, yeah. Uh, yeah. Wh- which is which is fine. I, I wasn't. I mean, a, a lot of us have been posting for quite some time that we are not expecting a big lockup. You have to keep in mind everything. If you watch how these guys have done anything over the past eight years, it's been calculated step by step. And Dip will talk about this in a minute, but it's been pretty much on par with how any major business would roll out a product. Um, and we'll, we'll get to that part in a second. Um, but uh, one interesting thing um, that Hara did mention at the AMA regarding the actual um, uh, lockups is in their original uh, Jasmine Coin roadmap, um, you know, they're, they're expected to have a deflationary environment that will drive um, price up. That deflationary environment is um, uh, mostly uh, expected to be through staking in order to activate the wallets so that you can use uh, the data marketplace to exchange, uh, sell data, purchase data, whatever, whether you're a business or um, just somebody who's using a PDL and you want to sell your data. Um, So those do require staking. Um, I posted something on that with some older slides earlier today. I'll put that up in the Jumbotron too. Um, But he mentioned that he wants to create a block scanner for Jasmine like Etherscan. So that's going to be one of the best ways to accurately track uh, total value locked and to know, uh, because, you know, we can always kind of guess here and there. Um, this is the thing. This is why I always say like circulating supply when you're comparing it to, like with crypto, it's it's really more gimmick because uh, compared to what circulating supply is in traditional finance, because we don't know what all the wallets are. Some could just be lost and inaccessible, so they're technically not in circulating supply. So you have these massively inflated valuations for market caps for crypto companies, but they tend to all track the same, like as Dip said before. So whatever, <laughs> we'll, we'll take it. Um, but um, having a uh, block scanner built by Jasmine for Jasmine, uh, they'll be able to identify what they know is specifically uh, locked for various reasons, whether it's um, uh, you know for just staking on exchange uh, in countries that allow you to stake for uh, monetary profit, or whether it's staking to utilize the wallets, whatever incentives they have going down the road. So, um, uh, Dip, I know, will be looking forward to that block scanner. But uh, <laughs> go ahead, Dip. Yeah, uh, not really, because <laughs> one, it's good for it's good that we have like progress, but. Yeah, I mean, it's funny. I've been looking at Etherscan for the past like two weeks, and I was like, "Man, there have hardly been." I'm not saying they, they this hasn't happened, but there have hardly been transfers over even a million coins. That's how, like, that's how much we moved in the past like several months. Where, you know, there would always be like um, shifting around liquidity to meet like certain exchange wallet needs and stuff like that, or just moving coins from like a Binance to. Um, to another wallet, to a Coinbase or whatever, like you don't even see that anymore because it's just like there's a new there's a new group of entrants in Jasmine and probably crypto in general where now they feel a little more comfortable buying, but because of that level of comfort, they sacrificed a lot of potential gains. Um, but like you know, I think it'll be good. I'll still have a full time job um, with looking at coins and stuff like that, but. Um, I do think, you know, with with the lockup, it's good. I mean, it's it's 100 million coins. It's something. It's a start. And it, there's nothing that says that they're only going to do 100 million, right? Like, you also got to remember when they first – oh, did I put myself on mute? No. Um, when they first started out, they only released, like, X million tokens or X hundred million tokens, like 400 million tokens. Then they started releasing more coins. Then they finally updated the circulating supply to be like 4.7 billion. We thought it was that for a while. We were wrong. Um, but then, like, they also did come out with an article on Medium saying, like, by the end of October 2021, they had released all the contributors and communities tokens, and that's 10 billion. So the the reported supply was wrong. But based on that article, they had released over at least 10 billion. So like. 
the market cap we got to was a lot higher than whatever is going to be reported out there. And like I could, if I had enough time, I could find out the exact number. But like the the problem with EtherScan is like the more time that goes by, the harder it is to go back in time because there's just so much stuff going on. Um, but you know, lesson learned. And at the same time, I, I don't really care. I mean, the way, you know, when Brian was talking about the burn mechanism, it's not like, it would be very nice to have. I'm not going to lie. It would be very nice to have, but they could lock up more tokens in the future. It's not like a hundred million is the be all end all, right? Like, even if they do, let's say they did 200 million in the future each month, like after a year that picks up. And we also got to remember if the coins are being used, that's the most important thing like by far um, because it's about utility. There's still, there's still no crypto out there that has proven true utility. Solana might be one of the closest. Ethereum might be one of the closest, but that's because like so many tokens are on, you know, the ERC 20 um, and you know, Solana I think has like two or 3 million monthly active users, which I still think that number is inflated. And we just came out and there was just news that came out about Solana being like 75% of their transactions failing. So like, you know, it's not, it's okay to not be in a rush to get things done where if you see all of these other quote unquote leading crypto companies, because let's face it, Solana has done uh, extraordinarily well, whether the, the blockchain is funky or not. Um, you can learn from their mistakes and just build in the background. And then if you have all the other things prepared, then like you're good to go. Right. And then you don't have to worry about, because remember this, and then you don't have to worry about those hiccups, but like it's very complicated to create a payment system, right? Like even if you think about how traditional finance and banking and the banking system works, oh my God, I don't even know. I wouldn't even know where to start to like even explain that to you guys. And I wouldn't even be able to cover everything. Like it's that complicated. This is years of building and then, you know, they created laws to accommodate for all of the screw ups that have taken place, right? It's like, you know, when they first built a car, they didn't have seatbelts in there, right? But then like you had enough people getting into accidents um, and dying and stuff like that. And then they're like, oh, we need a seatbelt. And then there was a three point seatbelt, right? And then like all that stuff. So like through mistakes, you you kind of learn. And um, Jasmine is letting those other companies, not letting them make those make those mistakes, but they're learning from the mistakes of those um, of those other companies, and I think I think it'll be okay as long as the coins get used. I mean, that's utility, right? Use utility. Well, so. to, to your point, it's kind of like um, a lot of people argue like uh, Jasmine needs to hurry or they're going to miss first mover advantage. Um, that to me is uh, is a is a little naive because. Um, uh, Facebook didn't have first mover advantage. MySpace did. Visa didn't have first mover advantage. Diners Club did. I mean, you can go down the list. Google didn't have first mover advantage. It was probably the third um, search engine that I had used. I think web crawler and Netscape were ones that I mainly used before that. So you go down the list and, and you start seeing that most of the most successful companies we have today came after companies that had first mover advantage because they got to learn from those mistakes. So I'm not worried about them having a first mover advantage. I'm worried about them doing it right, which is what they're doing. And to mention just the uh, lockups, um, you know, my thesis is that uh, this is going to be exponential in terms of growth. And that's also exemplified in the um, uh, original Jasmine coin roadmap with the bar chart, which obviously, um, uh, under the previous management, uh, dilution did not go as the team planned, which is why they did a manager buyout, because the previous owner decided to start doing his own projects and diluting the crap out of us, like uh, the whole Jasmine Foundation fiasco. But that's why they started the uh, manager buyout in May of last year, and that's what some of Hara's messages were. But the um, uh, original bar charts, they anticipate that when the data marketplace is fully up and running, that 35 billion coins will be locked up, leaving a circulating supply of only around 15 billion. So to get to that type of exponential growth, you start with Panasonic partnership, you start with a slow rollout, you see how it goes, you correct any mistakes, you fix anything that's going wrong. Because if it goes like 
exactly as planned when it rolls out. I think that's going to be like a market first when you have an emerging technology and a very disruptive type of environment and, uh, you know, emergent AI just taking over everything. Um, I expect there to be a lot of uh, bumps in the road, but when they get things right with um, Panasonic, hopefully, and that goes correct, well, um, uh, I guess I'll just touch on this now. You know, I posted an uh, article about um, Panasonic where it was stating that um, from 2021, um, that someone found that I retweeted, stated that they have goals for 60% of their home appliance customers to be, um, uh, uh, or 60% of their I uh, home appliance sales to be IoT um, based home appliances and 10 million of their users to be connected to those IoT devices by end of fiscal year 2024. As of um, early last year in 23, I was on in some of their IR reports uh, for Panasonic, they already had 8 million users connected. So they're well on track to getting to that 10 million, but their goal was 10 million. Hara said that his goal for 2024 was 100,000. That's exactly 1% of 10 million, which Dip will touch on um, the implications of that. Um, Actually, go ahead and go ahead and do that because that kind of mm -hmm. that starts to lead to the exponential growth is when you have the slow rollout, things go correctly, you go from there, and more partnerships pick up, and suddenly you can start having tens of millions of PDLs generated by multiple other blue chip companies to onboarding like Sony, Toyota, et cetera. Yeah, uh, I did hear a baby in the back, Brian. So if you got a oh. that's all good. Um, no, no, he, he's good. Okay. Madison's got him. I didn't mean like, ah, oh, no, he'll find okay, okay, Yeah, Madison's okay. got him. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, I'm not, you know, I don't want to have to like call child services on you or something. Yeah, but, like, but, ah, uh, it's just a baby. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so he's, one, he's being taken one, care of. one thing Brian did mention that um, kind of uh, I wanted to add to was like he was talking about, oh, yeah, like, you know, when they're working with Panasonic, they'll go fix mistakes and whatever. It's like, the fact that a big company is trusting Jasmine to do something like this is incredible, right? Like when you when you have to talk to, I mean, obviously it's their connections and all that stuff, but like when you approach like people or companies that are going to be your giant clients, um, you got to have everything like ready made for them. If you don't, like if it's a joint venture, no, you don't have to really because like you're building together. But if it's like you know, if they were to go to Sony and be like, hey, even though they do have a lot of connections with Sony, and I do think um, we're all downplaying playing the Sony thing where this could this will go in a direction that even we could do all the research in the world for it and it's still gonna like knock us out. Like we're gonna be we're still gonna be somewhat surprised. Um, but like the fact that they're willing to trust Jasmine with something like this um, is very good. It's very good. Right. And of course, mistakes can happen, all that stuff like, you know, no, no investment is foolproof. I mean, look at look at what's going on with Tesla right now. Right. Tesla's getting its butt kicked. Um, it's been like the crappiest performer in the S&P. But for the, you know, the period before that, it was it was a high flyer and maybe not the top, but it was very good. So um, things do happen. But um, I think it's I think it's a very good step in the right direction. And what Brian was talking about also is like with the rollout, the hundred Har was talking about 100 K. Um, he could have given a one thing he could have done was given like a an easy to hit target just to keep us happy, and then if we think oh they hit 200k then it's like oh wow that's double than what we thought so like that must be very good. Um, but he also could be just testing it out and like you know when in the corporate world like usually when you test things out you don't test it on everybody because if something goes wrong. Um, you only get one shot to make a good first impression, right? People aren't going to use your your technology or whatever it is you're offering again. So if you test it within a small group, then you can work on those kinks. But it's a it's a it's a large enough group to where you have a rep, a good enough sample size. So that's like that's what they're really looking for here. Is like they can hit on enough of the demographics. They can hit on enough of you know they can get. Maybe not every sort of scenario that they would face, but because it's a hundred thousand people, you can get like ninety nine point nine percent of them. So 
it's a it's a very good thing. One thing that is interesting though is like with the ten million that Brian was talking about, their goal in Japan is to get seven million data lockers, which I'm like, I mean, this is your home. You sh- you should be shooting for much more than that. But um, it is what it is, especially when you talk about ten million with Panasonic. I'm assuming that's I don't know if that's Panasonic worldwide or just Japan, but um, it should be worldwide. Um, okay. In Japan, you have the aging uh, population and declining birth rate. So yeah. you have a lot of people who are kind of getting left behind in the digital transformation policies, even though one of the policies from Prime Minister Kishida is to leave no one behind. 